So the top player uh, payout problem has been a, a big problem for a long time. I remember this back in 2014, and the reason why I'm making a video about this is because um, it, it's something that I feel very personally attached to. It's something that I've, I've actually poured a lot of my life at this point into trying to fix, and I think I've got a solution. So right now, the idea is that, you know, we're trying to figure out how top players can be paid anything that's reasonable. And by that, I mean, if the best example is that Zero recently tweeted out that after an incredible run, a legendary run of winning basically every super major and 52 tournaments in a row and all this stuff, he made around $45,000 in 2014. Now, the landscape is a little bit different, but it's actually probably not that different in terms of payout if you were able to achieve the same thing. The main, in today's landscape, the main difference is that Smash Summit is, uh, is, is a big inflator of the prize pool situation now. But outside of that, it's pretty slim pickings. Um, similar to where we were four years ago or, you know, before that. And so... Right now, a lot of the focus has been very internal in the Smash community. I think that's a problem. I think we're not thinking big enough. A few people have talked about how, you know, wouldn't it be great if Nintendo would sponsor events? But there's been this very defeatist attitude. And I think that that's, I think that's the real problem here. Instead of saying, you know, well, our venue fees should be higher, our entry fees should be higher, our... Uh, the distribution between tournament organizers and like w what budget goes towards that versus what budget goes towards the uh, players, the payouts. I think that's the wrong approach. If you look at every other competitive esport out there, the, the ones that we're really comparing ourselves to in terms of viewership, in terms of player count, in terms of number of entrants, in terms of all of this stuff and why we make so much less money, it's because Basically every other one has developer support, right? And so I think this is something that we should be pushing Nintendo to do. Because if you look at who's the big winner off of an event like Big House, it's not the streamer, it's not the TOs, it's definitely not the players. It's Nintendo. Um, because, and it's not like they're selling Switches at Big House or something, but if you think about it, there's a massive number of people who watched uh, Big House or have read about it and read about, uh, you know, all of these things. So this is the best possible marketing that you can get. If somebody sees the Smash community and they're saying, wow, what a tournament. This is amazing. I, the, these games have so much history, whether it's all the, every single one of them, 64, Melee, et cetera, et cetera, all the way through Ultimate. You have something for anybody to, to jump into and buy. And so if I'm going to get ultimate because of this, I'm buying a switch, a controller, an adapter, a game, an online service, all the DLC. That's a lot of money. Nintendo is definitely making a lot off of this and not having to spend a dime on marketing because marketing is much more expensive than you probably uh, would, would even be thinking about. Um, so the idea in my mind is that how do we convince Nintendo that it's a worthy investment? By the way, I do want to point out, I'm not, I'm not saying it's a bad thing that Nintendo is at the top, that they are the big winner out of all this. They made the game. And I think if you make a game that millions and millions of people rally around, you should be the big winner, right? But I do think that uh, we as a community need to be pushing Nintendo and and just trying to convince them in, in a better fashion that this is an investment that they, you know, every other gaming community that has like a big esports scene, games like League of Legends and Dota and Rocket League and Overwatch and uh, even Brawlhalla or Rivals of Ether in the platform fighting space, all of these communities have invested, have been invested in by the game developers themselves because they find that it's, it gives better player retention, 
It gives better lifespan to the game. It has better viewership overall if they're really good storylines. And if you enable people to to pursue these things in a in a bigger capacity than you know as a hobby, then they will. So I just think of somebody like IBDW recently tweeted that. You know, he's consistently making top eights in singles, and he's consistently making top threes in doubles, and he still is at a net loss on these events. And so unless you have a sponsor, you can't pursue this full time. You just can't, right? But in other games, you could, because the developer support is there and the money is there from the people that make the most money. So it makes the most sense for, for that person to invest back into what makes them the most money, right? And they could get better monetization models. They could repackage Melee and sell it on the Switch or something. But uh, for anyone who says like, oh, well, they don't make any money off of Melee anymore. That's, uh, I, I think that's a decision. And, you know, so I don't have a lot of sympathy for it. They could make money off of it if they wanted to. It's totally within their rights to not. But, you know, that is their decision to not make money off of it. So the reason why I say I'm so passionate about this is because it hits close to home for me because not that I was like a top player or anything in 2014, but I was doing everything that I could think of to give back to the community that I grew up in and to try to find ways that I could make that a sustainable, maybe not career, but at least a sustainable way to pay my rent and pursue full time. So I was doing stuff like, you know, I was competing, of course, I was going to tournaments, I was hosting tournaments, I was streaming, I was a uh, Reddit moderator trying to grow the Smash community in any way I could. Uh, just all of these things, anything that I could think of to do this. And no matter how I thought about it, it was just, well, we, we need developer support. And so I started to think, well, Maybe I should make a game <laughs> that, where if I'm the developer, I can support the community. Now I'm not the first person to do this. Rivals of Ether, Brawlhalla, a lot of other games have done this uh, with a very similar premise. But you know, this was this was my dream to do. Is that uh, you know if if my game or any of these games can succeed, then Nintendo will take a step back and say, well, maybe this is worth investing in because they made that decision with online play when they were really reluctant to do it. And they said, all right, well, Microsoft and Sony have incredible online play, or at least pretty good. At the time, it was pretty good. Um, and so people really like this. People are willing to pay for this. It's making a lot of money. We should do this, right? So they, even though they're a very stubborn company, they do listen if this is the way that the market goes, right? And so I think if if we can show support for games that, uh, I mean, not to plug my game too hard, but like mine, like Rivals, like Slap City and Brawlhalla, and these types of games, right? Uh, then, then I think that that honestly is the answer. And that is, like, I quit my job to, to do this, to try to solve this issue. So it's just, it's really interesting that the timing of this has come up exactly now. Because right now we've got an alpha that is uh, free to play, it's, it's available, we're just really just looking for feedback and uh, trying to grow a community. But, I don't know, it's just, it's all just really, like, personal for me. Because I would have loved to do uh, do this stuff full-time and the way that I, I tried to do it was well I'll just make the game and then I can support other people trying to do this full-time if I can make a game worthy of, of people's you know passion then that was you know that was the dream so anyway if you are interested in my game uh, you can you can check it out discord.gg slash metagames uh, sorry to plug but you know, for what it's worth, you should also go play Slap City, Rivals of Ether, and Brawlhalla. The last one is free to play, so you don't even, you know, you should check out any of these games because um, I think there's room for all of us, and I think that uh, 
you know, if if Nintendo sees all of us doing well and doing well specifically supporting our our most passionate fans, then they're much more apt to actually step in and listen when we say, hey, this is what we want. And this is why we want it, because it will help you as well. Then I think they're I think they're likely to listen. So anyway, hope everyone's having a great day and uh, I guess I'll catch you later.